Thanks a lot. Yeah, so we can start, right? Um, yeah, thanks for coming and uh, paying uh, your attention to our topic today. Um, quickly introducing us, maybe not in so official manner. So this is Anna, <laughs> this is Leo. We are um, working at um, Kreuzwerke. Kreuzwerke is a German company, and um, we are mainly in the IT consulting business. Uh, we do have uh, cloud consulting, um, Atlassian consulting. We are helping people to get along with Jira. We are uh, do helping, uh, helping companies to uh, get up into the cloud and run it successfully. And we have a part of, of the business is also um, agile transformation, organizational transformation, where I'm uh, doing consulting. So the company is um, quite big at the moment, so we, get, uh, we had a quite a big growth uh, during the pandemic time. We went from around 90 people to 180, so quite a huge growth. And uh, right now, three offices in Germany, in Berlin, in Munich, and in Frankfurt, and we have subsidiaries in Poland and in Switzerland. Yeah. And uh, 180 employees, not everybody is right now on the sustainability path, but we are trying to um, yeah, promote the topic, and uh, both of us, we are coordinators for this topic in the company. Yeah. So, and today, uh, we just wanted to show you how we, what we did actually, um, what, uh, how was our job done uh, through the pandemic time and in the last uh, year, because we did a couple of actions um, and we tried to bring people on board with sustainability topic. Um, Time-wise, uh, we quickly th go through our presentation and hopefully then we have a discussion and questions and yeah, just chat. How is the plan? Good? Good, then let's go. Yeah, so acting on climate protection and sustainability as a socially responsible IT company from, at least we think we are socially responsible. Yes, we are a bit. Yeah, so a responsible IT company from uh, Kreuzberg. It's, and it all started in 2020. Mm -hmm. So a while ago. Over to Anna. Yes, I'm here. So um, the Kreuzberger was founded actually in 2014. And many uh, and the sustainability was always part of Kreuzberger spirit and uh, actions. But uh, until 2020, um, it was not part of our company values. When we onboarded sustainability in our company values, but in 2020, even then, it was not very clear what that actually meant. Uh, the sustainability topic is uh, was owned at the moment and is still owned by our culture club. The culture club is a company board conformed by employees who volunteer to uh, promote and improve our values, our ethics, our um, corporate responsibility, our work environment, our work-life balance, etc. They have many topics on the table. And um, there were many sustainability actions from the beginning. Like I said, we have, uh, for instance, uh, um, bio, fair trade coffee available in our offices. We have access to a uh, company bike. We have uh, water filters so that we don't yeah, uh, have to buy bottled water, etc. And even we uh, have a bio vegetarian lunch served every day in our Berlin office where most of our employees are based. Uh, and uh, the food is provided by the Merkische Kiste. They provide local bio food to our office. Everything else is uh, bought in the, or provided from the bio company. So uh, to say to maintain the sustainability quality to the food we eat in the company. But as I said, these were individual actions taken, no direction, no uh, goal, no measurement. So. Um, there was no, not an ultimate goal, and as I said, the, 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 the impact or the success of the, of the initiative was not measured or uh, yeah, planned in any way. So there was no understandings of our strengths, of our resources, and uh, nobody knew actually what was the motivation behind it. I mean, as I said, it was always part of the Kreuzberger spirit that people were aware of these actions, but nothing else was said. No? Um, so there was a lack of acceptance for the topic, so to say, company-wide. I mean, the, the, the Culture Club was taking care of it, and that was it. Um, so in March 2020, 
we had the opportunity to embark in a one-year project with two students from the master's um, program quality and sustainability management from the Hochschule Wirtschaftsunrecht in Berlin, and they worked with Kreuzwerker for a complete year. Just before the pandemic broke out, the project was done half on site, half remotely, and uh, they ran some workshops, they did some interviews, they looked at our current status quo, and they were able sort of say, to start to measure what the impact was from our sustainability actions. They mapped our actions towards this, the sustainable development goals, say, hey, this is what you're doing, this is in the direction where you should be going. They planned some more goals for us and some sort of a strategy. But after a year, however, nobody knew very well what to do with all this information. This topic became huge for the Culture Club, who had already so many things on their table. And uh, then the pandemic broke out. And this didn't seem, again, not a very important topic for anyone at the company at the time. Uh, again, then uh, also all these measures are centered in our office. And for more than a year, all our colleagues have been working remotely everywhere. So there was a sort of complexity added to the topic from that side. So the Culture Club started looking for, our, for a sustainability coordinator, someone who would take over the topic of sustainability, who could promote it within the company, who could drive it for, forward, maybe onboard some interested colleagues also. And uh, the sustainability initiative was only going to be successful as a long-term project. This is not something that you can do in a year, in two years. It has to become part of your company or, or your association, whatever, no? Uh, so um, there was some, as I said, some complexity within this topic, pandemic, remote workers. Uh, so uh, the sustainability coordinator had to have not only uh, passion for the topic, uh, organizational talent, PM skills, as you can see here, willing to pick up people, uh, but also a certain tolerance for frustration, to be honest. <laughs> uh, so um, all the applicants, this was an internal call. We were not hiring. It had to be someone who knew the Kreuzbacher uh, internally. So uh, the Culture Club would interview everyone who submitted their applications and then would decide, okay, who will become our sustainability coordinator. Next slide, please. But uh, things were not that easy. <laughs> uh, only two people um, applied for the sustainability coordinator position, and yes, you got that right. It was Leo and myself. Uh, <laughs> um, not many people felt that they had the time to take over this responsibility or this complex topic, so... Um, there were also many things to think about, right? As a consultancy company, uh, many uh, deep, complex questions arise with the topic of sustainability, right? If we want to do it seriously and honestly, are we willing to renounce financially or to do less interesting technical stuff to support the right customers? If we take it seriously, sustainability would also have influence in our customer portfolio and our partnerships, of course, as well. Um, are we willing to um, accept lesser earnings as a company and invest part of our budget to certain initiatives, to certain projects that we all agree on? And well, Leo and I decided to devise some sort of a survey where we can measure the interest of our colleagues in just support and interest in the sustainability uh, yeah. topic. So uh, we asked this and some other questions that people had really to consider and think about. And out of 90 or 100 employees that we were at the moment, only 19 responded. <laughs> so uh, this showed to us that there was a lack of interest, that there was a certain indifference for the topic at the moment. And uh, well, it was kind of uh, a fiasco. <laughs> uh, next, yeah. So. Uh, so far, uh, our experience was not, was not a great one. We had um, some actions, but no clear understanding of where we were going. Uh, some uh, supporters, but no ownership, actually, of the full sustainability initiatives. 
And we had spent one year in a project with, uh, with the students of the master's program that, to our understanding, failed to catch our essence and lacked a Kreuzberger personality. It was not our own. Um, and um, the words of our big spox biggest sponsor in the company were, I could have Googled it on my own. So yeah, not a very good uh, feedback. We were very uh, at a loss as to what was coming um, first. But we were not anywhere close to give up. This is the lesson that we've learned first. We need our own initiative. We need to understand what sustainability means at Kreuzwerke, for our colleagues, for the employees, and how do we translate that into action? How, what do we do as consultants? What is our business? How is it that we can implement this in our context? So, uh, yes, Leo and I uh, became sustainability coordinators. Uh, we formed a team. In my case, uh, I am not uh, formed formally in the sustainability um, area. I am more or less a sustainability um, enthusiast, so to say. Uh, re rather recently, one could say, when my daughter was born eight years ago, it became apparent to me that um, future generations rely on us for survival. Quite literally, this is not a figure of speech. So. Um, it, it, as I said, it became apparent to me, and I thought, okay, we need to change. How do we change? We need to change ourselves if we want to see change in other places, if we want to reflect that change. It needs to start from within. So what Kortheka called for the sustainability coordinator position, I thought, this is my call. This is a place where I love to work. I love my colleagues. We do great work together, and this is my opportunity to do as... Um, it was mentioned before my main role is information security um, risk manager. So this is my opportunity to do meaningful uh, work. So I accepted the call and I became, together with Leo, sustainability coordinator. So my motivation is a little bit less emotional, <laughs> <laughs> but still there. So as an uh, organizational consultant, organizational development consultant, I do a lot of uh, work with changes. So for example, cloud transformation is coming as a change to the company, or agility is approaching the company, how, how the companies are dealing with this. And with the sustainability, I saw actually immediately the same pattern. Yeah, so this is change for complete company. Yeah, so, and I thought, okay, with um, these methods uh, which I have at hand as agile coach, I can um, completely help this initiative um, to strive. Yeah, I hoped I can. So anyway, I used um, all those methods in my work, and um, and maybe just. Additionally, I'm also like, I really love surfing and, and do it a lot, and sometimes water is not good, so... <laughs> For me, it was like, a, everything what we do with sustainability maybe in some way will influence the quality of the water where, where I'm surfing. It's a long way, but yeah, <laughs> still valuable to go. Anyway, so we formed the team, and our first assignment was somehow to understand in which direction we want to go as a company. So we had a lot of actions, 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 but uh, no general direction. And um, exactly, one of the things what I'm doing in the companies is basically uh, vision consulting, vision workshops. And in this case, I did it just in, in my company, we organized the series of workshops on the vision, sustainability vision. So we went to a nice place in Berlin, uh, very inspiring, and uh, uh, we had a uh, quite a good group of uh, representative and motivated people. This is probably the key to success here, to get, to get them in one room and to make them thinking and have fun. And uh, we had like um, important stakeholders who are basically who are sponsoring resources in this time. In, this, in our case, it's money and time, right? <laughs> so um, inspiring place, yes, yeah, so I'll show it uh, later. Uh, and we had quite a lot of challenges to... Uh, um, to work on. So those um, a lot of buzzwords around sustainability, yeah, so this all huge SDGs, which are rather for um, rather for states less than for organizations. Um, and we had like no 
tooling inside of this um, initiative. So we had no vision, no mission, no strategy, no principles. We had to uh, go through them, figure them out. And um, as Anna previously said, it was in the middle of Corona, so in the middle of pandemic, and uh, it didn't seem the most important thing to do. So we also like, we're really, we do it now? or we will uh, wait until it's gone. Uh, but we said, no, 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 it will, it will go on. It's one of our values. Um, values needs to be lived and filled with life. So let's, let's move on to the vision. And yeah, exactly. Um, inspiring place. This is really like nice place in Berlin called um, Spreeacker und Spreefeld. Um, it's a co-op building uh, for people who are... Um, yeah, so they build it together. Um, with, let's say, um, uh, quite a few um, resources available. So uh, uh, these are like creative people with um, sometimes less in, um, income and maybe no, no savings. And uh, they created basically affordable living, uh, super green. They use um, all the areas around. It's also in Kreuzberg um, on the riverside. And close to it is located Spreeacker. Spreeacker is uh, for people who has no home, so they can do some a little gardening, also in the middle of, of the city. And uh, for us, we picked this up because it, like, it was super nicely, uh, well um, done project, where many people definitely had one vision, and they somehow came to one solution. And it was really a complex thing to build three big, uh, big houses with many, many flats and uh, possibilities to garden. Uh, so it looked for us complex enough and uh, somehow vision fulfilled. So we so said, okay, cool. Uh, we inspire us here, and then we also come up with the vision. Um, so then basically uh, during the workshop, we had a couple of deep questions where people said, oh, uh, come on, this is too, ha uh, too hard to, uh, to answer. I'm, I'm tired. Uh, I don't know. I need a break. So they really said it was not easy to answer. Uh, one of them uh, was um, why, sustainability, why we work together on sustainability initiative without any financial gain um, in front of us. So the question of beliefs, yeah? So how hard we believe in this so we are uh, ready to invest up front. What are our core beliefs? Why sustainability matters to you in organizational context? It was important because everybody is coming with kind of um, enthusiasm. And sometimes enthusiasm, enthusiasm means had, um, um, eco uh, cafe or bio cafe or, I don't know, food from Biomarkt. But how to frame it in the organizational context? How to get this, um, because we are consultants, we are kind of we are fast learning people. So we need to gain basically um, the strengths of, of our main uh, business into the sustainability yeah, inside it. So this was the question, um, what are our biggest internal resources to realize our beliefs? What difference will we introduce in our lives and lives of our partners through the sustainability initiative and partners in the broader sense? We also are touching families, so we kind of want to influence not only our business partners, but generally surrounding around us. Um, and what can be unique to Kreuzwerke in sustainability? So we had basically this huge list of actions from uh, the previous project, but we had no uniqueness in it. And many companies are uh, producing kind of sustainability visions. Um, for example, IKEA is a good example of, of company who really have a really well thought sustainability uh, program with vision and mission and yearly strategies. And, uh, but they do have it unique, so they really frame it in their own uh, world. All right, so, and we came up with the vision. So this is uh, the picture of the future for us. And future is not so far, so we said uh, vision is okay for three years, and then we will rethink whether this vision is kind of coming to life or we need to change it a little bit. So. Sustainability as a comprehensive part of Kreuzwerker's professional and private acting. So not only professional, but also private. Private, Starting from within and with ourselves by supporting our employees and our local community. So we definitely stay in Kreuzberg and we would like to influence Kreuzberg sustainability locally. Um, we want to act as enablers, multipliers and inspiration to encourage business. So we do not only believe that we can change ourselves, we also believe that we can also influence the others, our partners. 
uh, and hopefully we are inspiration in some point of time. So we are for business and end communities to become more sustainable. Yeah? So we are not only uh, kind of focused on our partners, business partners, but really looking in a broader sense in our local environment. Uh, there are principles connected because one, just one sentence is not enough to explain what we want to do. There is like more explanation needed. Um, so uh, principles, uh, we can have a bigger impact. Sustainability is uh, in the center of our business and culture. So we want to go into the products. So our IT products or our IT services uh, will become more and more sustainable and have the part of sustainability in them. Um, sustainability is a long-term perspective that unites. So 180 people, they need to be kind of brought together. Some are older, some are younger, some are techies, some are finances. And we would like this, that sustainability is like a red line for the whole company. Yeah. And our location is our identity, so from Kreuzberg, with uh, 35 interna uh, so nationalities in the company, we would like to act locally, but also profit from our internationality. Yeah, so get some inspiration there as well. Right, um, so we set vision three years, and we have yearly strategy. And this is the first year with sustainability strategy. And we said, okay, cool, uh, to get people on board, it would be good to start with food. Um, so we started basically to, um, yeah, to eat sustainably and to have some um, events connected to the food sustainability, right? That's the easiest. So now the topic is over. <laughs> the next one is harder. Um, that we uh, are sustainable in home office. Because many, many people uh, in the home office, they're just occasionally coming to the company for one or two days. But mainly, the rest of, uh, of five days are staying at home. So, uh, water consumption, electricity, waste, etc. We all uh, need to be uh, there better. Then we want that every Kreuzwerker has an understanding of sustainability. As we said, the beginning was with how many people? 19 interested people, so we are 180. We really clearly can um, have it as a key performance indicator. Maybe next year there will be 20 interested. I don't know. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully 180. <laughs> yeah, so basically, yeah, we formulated some steps and a seed a sustainability strategy for this year. And next year we will rediscuss. Next year there will be a next strategy. Okay. Ooh. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, and basically how we are doing this year, uh, what, are we, uh, what are our actions to enable the strategy? Over to Anna. Thank you. Okay, so as we said, our strategy for this year is to build an active sustainability community within Kreuzwerke. We want to onboard our colleagues, those who have the energy, those who have the potential, to come on board the sustainability strategy and help us thrive, move it forward. So some of the actions that we are taking are internally events. We write some regularly blog posts. We do a couple of sustainability lunches already. These are topic lunches where we bring a topic, we bring some information, we bring a speaker, a colleague, who wants to talk about how they live sustainably in a portion of their lives. Of course, none of us is doing it perfectly. We can all get better, we can share information, we can discuss. Great thing about the sustainability lunches, uh, our experience, is that uh, the conversation happens quite naturally. We are all colleagues sitting at the lunch table, sharing some food, talking, discussing, agreeing, disagreeing, finding a common compromise, that was very nice. Uh, we had colleagues who talked about um, they are being vegan, why they are doing it, how it impacts their lives. Just we have colleagues vegan. who talked about uh, uh, from, uh, being part of a... Um, zero waste community, uh, right? Zero waste community, exactly, explaining us what that means, how they do it, 
the principles of the zero waste community. We had colleagues explaining us about uh, being part of a social, uh, socialist uh, Landwirtschaft, so, like a social farming yeah. project, yeah. what it means for them and their family, uh, how do you become part of a social farming project, and how do they work in Berlin, in Brandenburg, where we are located. And uh, we also had a colleague who lives in a boat, and she has not so many uh, space to store, so she has to really plan what she's going to consume, consuming, not generating waste. Uh, she also doesn't have a lot of energy available, so she has to take care of that as well. Uh, we brought together with Leo some um, bugs for people to uh, sort of challenge, provoke, see what, what the reaction was. It was the same reaction good. as you guys <laughs> <laughs> for the lunch, bugs for the lunch, yeah. Uh, but anyway, this lunch format, uh, it worked really well at Kreuzberg. I, 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 I must say, um, we have, uh, of course, sometimes we... Uh, like Leo said, many people work remote. We have five locations. We want everyone on board, so we do also virtual meetings where we have... Uh, maybe the format is not as fun as a lunch, uh, but still we need that as well, having five different locations. Um, we have uh, open Friday presentations. Uh, we, we have this knowledge uh, sharing format at Kreuzwerke, where we do once every quarter an open Friday and we offer sessions and all our colleagues, consultants, uh, talk about technical topics, organizational topics, self-development topics, whatever it is that they want to present, uh, for everyone to share their knowledge, exactly. So sometimes we also have used this format to discuss, to brainstorm, to get people on board, to, to, to listen to their opinions, how we are doing, what do we need, where do we need to get better, etc. Uh, we do movie nights, we watch some documentaries, spark some discussions. Uh, this is also very fun at our um, office in Kreuzberg. Um, and, and also something that is calling our colleagues to come, to come together, to look at the topics that we are presenting and hopefully discuss afterwards. And uh, last but not least, we are also part of our company-wide All Hands which means uh, in our company-wide all hands, this happens also once every quarter. And this is mainly where our CEOs and business line leaders talk about the business strategy. And we thought the sustainability strategy must be equal and must have the same importance and the same hierarchy. So we also took over, so to say, or were offered a spot in the, um, in the all hands. And we talk about what is it that we're doing, uh, where are we in our, in our path towards our vision, and this way also those employees that might not be as involved have also the opportunity to listen to what is it that is being done, maybe they catch some, something interesting, or at least uh, see there is a presence for this uh, sustainability initiative at Kreuzberg. So, okay, yes, I will take home a message for today or what we would like to share with you um, is our learnings. What have we learned in the last two years? And uh, some of these uh, learnings had to do with the time it took for us to come up with what we needed to do. Uh, it's worthy to invest the time and find your own understanding, definition of sustainability, what it means in your context, whether it is the university, a company, an association, or your family. Sustainability is a complex thing, and it has many, uh, many ways in which we can view sustainability, and everyone has a different understanding. So coming together and discussing and learning from each other and forming a community was for us a key development. Um, in our case, also making our future statement clear so that everyone understands what is that we want to achieve, in which direction we want to go. And for this, uh, no external people could help us at Kreuzwerker do this. We had to do it on our own. And last but, last but not least, get people onboarded, get people engaged, uh, discuss again, talk to each other, and try to understand different points of view 
because the more we are, not only the merrier, also the stronger and the more rich it gets because it's, it gets diverse, we all have different points of view, and we all can uh, give something different to the topic. So these were our learnings in oh, these nice. two years. Yep. And now also we are looking for something because uh, we um, also want to get bigger. We want our sustainability initiative to get bigger. We, do it, we not only want to stay within Kreuzberg uh, at Kreuzberg, we uh, also identified in these workshops that Leo told you about some SDGs towards which we could work. Uh, together with our colleagues, we sat down we look at the sustainable development goals and we said, okay, these are the three sustainability, sustainable development goals in which we are more, the most interested, so to say. And now we need to translate them into what it means for a company, for an IT company in Berlin, Kreuzberg, in 2022. So um, the first uh, SDG we identified is sustainable cities and communities. In this sense, uh, we would want to uh, reflect on our role as a, as a company in Kreuzberg, uh, in Kreuzberg. Uh, and what is our, <laughs> probably, and what is um, our role in our community and in our neighborhood and how can we uh, positively influence that uh, by taking actions. So for this, uh, we are seeking for guidance, we are seeking for partnerships, associations, NGOs, maybe, maybe um, groups of uh, companies or communities who are already doing something in this sense, or maybe public uh, initiatives that we could join. As Leo said, we are consultants, our superpower is our brains. We can learn stuff, we can bring our knowledge to others who need it. Uh, so, uh, the second one we have identified is quality education. Uh, again, being a social actor in an urban area, we face inequalities every day. We see it uh, at our door and we would like to reflect on our role. How do we support the right for education in our community, but not only, um, everywhere in the world actually. Uh, so for this also we are looking for uh, partnerships that will allow us to bring our knowledge to those who maybe didn't have the opportunity to access education and how we can uh, help form new professionals in our um, area. Uh, there is a lot of demand. We need more people. We are constantly hiring and this is also something that will feed our own pipeline. So, you know, it's a good way also to look at it, and it's the truth. And last but not least, of course, climate action. The case for climate action is clear, and we at Koiswerke understand that by taking climate action, we also forge, we can forge sustainable business and, and on top of that, sustainable communities. So here, again, we are looking for the opportunity to um, have a... To, to volunteer our colleagues. We also have measured this and, and, and in many calls and in many uh, discussions it came up that our consultants are willing to volunteer their time or Kreuzberger's time. <laughs> to, and their time as well, yeah. <laughs> to, um, to help, yes, maybe ecological projects, uh, public initiatives or other companies who are taking climate action. So this is what we are looking for right now. Exactly. Uh, partnerships so that we can become stronger in this topic. All right. So if you have some ideas um, and proposals how to partner with us, come over. Otherwise, do we have time for questions? Yeah, one minute uh, uh, until this time is over. And maybe... Right. And any questions, uh, you're welcome. Okay. Deutsch geht, Deutsch geht auch, ja? Also, <lacht> Deutsch, Deutsch geht auch. Thank you for your presentation. It was very informative. Uh, I, was, I had, have a few questions, but I'll try to combine them a little bit. Um, how was the support from management for this role? 
And is this role something that you do as a volunteer or is this your paid job? That's basically my first question. And the second one is, um, has this uh, started a conversation in your company on how to use your sustainable goals that you're working on internally, also for your clients? Yeah, so one of the client is um, AIDA. <laughs> and of course, this is like, a, for us, an um, um, example. You know, do we work with AIDA or we don't work with AIDA? It's of course the question and... Uh, AIDA? AIDA is a cruise company. Ah, okay. So cruise they're basically company. big polluters. Super big polluters, yeah. And, and we are like uh, super uh, close partners with them. And this is like, of course, the question, yeah, do we lose money for sustainable clients? So, and if, how we will uh, how we'll go this way? And big question. Um, but generally, we do have a great sponsor. This is CEO of our company. He's a great sport sponsor, so we had uh, from the beginning on a good start. Um, he has uh, strong um, ideas about sustainability and that why sustainability is a part of uh, company value, uh, but it's not enough, right? So we need everybody on board. Um, yeah, I would press on the first uh, question a little more. Did you see changes in what you did for the companies or which companies you worked with? So for us, maybe the first year was uh, the year to educate ourselves. Yeah. So we saw it's just only really 20 people interested. So there is no point to go um, farther to kind of um, uh, missioner for, for, for other companies even if we are not have a strong core inside. So we said first we educate ourselves and then we go for products, sustainable products, and then we will see what's the response on the market. It's probably the next year we are going. We are trying. Uh, mm -hmm. We will start with this, right? So. Yes. Any more? This club shows two, two minutes. My says is finished. So, but um, you. you're free to have another question. Otherwise, I would give an announcement. What's going on outside? Yes. Thank you so Great. much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for being And uh, here. feel for free to twice. contact Kreuzwerker because there uh, seems a very interesting, nice people there. And so um, hopefully good luck for you. Um, for you, it's maybe in interesting. There is lovely food outside. It's a Mar Maroc chickpea curry with bread. So there's lots of it. Please join the kitchen and uh, take some food. And additionally, some of you might have free space in between some sections, Freedom. some lectures. Uh, we're still looking for angels. So angels are helping hands all through the bits and boimer. So you can give a hand in the kitchen by cutting things or by cleaning dishes. Uh, you can also as well be helping in the uh, info section and so on. If you like to do something for the rest of the day, except of uh, watching and hearing the good talks we have, just go to the info point. They will be very lucky and very happy to see you being an angel for Bits and Bäume. And last but not least, we do have a Bits and Bäume journal, which is the publication at the end of the Bits and Bäume. There is a call for participation uh, until the 16th of October. There is a form you can fill in, and if you have interesting things that might be well done uh, in this journal, which will be published and ha will have, for sure, a good resonance. Uh, so, thank you so much. <laughs>